Eternal God knows my name. He calls me his own. I can't believe it, but I receive it. The fact that he walks with me. And when I fall, he picks me up and talks to me. When he could reject me, he brings me close and he tells me, Son, you belong to me, you are my own. And I still can't believe it, you know my name. Oh, you know my name. It's eight billion people in the world, but you know my name. And you were there when I was born. You, you knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Hey, oh. And you tell me I am your own. Oh, 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 oh. Can't believe you know me. Can't believe you kept me. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, because millions didn't make it. But I was one of the ones who did. One day I'll look at God and say that millions didn't make it. But I was one of the ones who did. You know my name. You know my name. I have identity. Inside of your will. I'm alive because you willed it to be so. And every devil in hell, you told them no. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, speak through your word and release profound revelation, insight, and clarity that sets the edges for your church for this year it is my prayer and it shall be that you get all the glory it all belongs to you in Jesus name amen there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord there are sweet expressions on each face And I know it's because of the presence of the Lord. I have before me a challenge. Do I 
offer you empty calories of a candied variety that has been in line with many of the prevailing tropes and memes and pithy phrases and one-liners that have permeated the history of the church in recent years only to fall straight to the ground because they did not come from the throne room of God for the purposes of a temporary moment of excitement? Or do I give you the word that the Lord has been speaking to me for some time that is a bit more challenging than the normal Sunday fare? And the answer is without equivocation, I'm going to give you the word of the Lord. What you do with it is on you. But if you're listening, then the Lord invited you into a conversation that he wants to have with the earth. Inasmuch as there are many buildings open does not mean that there are places where the word of God can cohabitate six feet apart, saints, six feet apart, and masks. Praise Jesus in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, I love everybody. I want nobody uh, to be put in harm's way. Um, let me say this now. This is not a teaching moment. This is a word release moment. Okay, let me make that clear. We're not going to go down eight points. I don't have a slideshow presentation. This is a word. Everybody say this is a word. Put it in the chat feed. This is a word. Pastor Jonathan Miller from Faith Alive International Ministries in South Bend, Indiana, is one of the most necessary, relevant voices anywhere in the kingdom of God. He's known across social media platforms as YPJ, or Youth Pastor Johnny, but he's far more than a youth pastor. He's a senior pastor. He is from a legacy of leadership but he's a strange bird, this guy. He's a musician. He's a prophet. He's an exhorter. He's an encourager. He's a pastor. He is poured into this church and poured into your pastor in ways that the world will never know. Um, he is incredibly insightful, uh, but somehow still not as much of a household name as the oil that he carries needs to be. And that is on the timing of God and on the placement and purpose of God. But I just wanted to take a moment because Pastor Johnny Miller has been a friend and brother to me and he said something a couple of weeks ago in preparation for the new year that struck me in a way that very few things in my life have. And he said, 2021 is not your year. It is the most profound statement that is antithetical to uh, the celebratory church mindset around the new year. You know, and when he said it, I said, that's what I've been wrestling with. Because while everybody else and many others seem to be running in a different direction, God said, come here, I want to talk to you. And I am reticent to say anything that God didn't say. I can't say it because I belong to God. And you don't play with the voice of God or the word of God, the name of God or the people of God. He is holy. We don't play games with God's name. You don't throw stuff out there because it sounds good, but God didn't tell you to say it because people hitch their proverbial wagons to leadership, which is one thing I had to learn in 2020. I thought I was... Uh, optional. I thought that if, if I, you know, fell off, it wouldn't be a big deal, but there are lives and souls attached to my obedience, and the enemy had tricked me into agreeing with him, even though God told me who I was, and I wouldn't agree with God. God said, until you agree with me, your whole life will be frustrated. So here I am on the first Sunday of 2021, and I'm trying to have a conversation with you about something that the Lord has spoken to me, and I need you to hear me by the 
power of the Holy Ghost that 2021 is not your year, but it is a year of the intentional. This is the year of the intentional. And for as long as the Spirit of God is speaking to me over these next couple of months, we're going to be dealing with the year of the intentional. And so every week, the first word you're going to hear is intentional. Everybody say intentional. And I was like, Lord, give me something great to say to the people that's going to encourage them and, and, you know, exciting. He said, well, I mean, I could, you could use your own imagination or you could do what I said. So I'm going to do what he says. And we're going to start in Matthew chapter 26, starting at the 36th verse. This is the year of the intentional. It's a new year. Everybody's supposed to be excited about the new year, and I want you to be excited about the new year, but maybe not for the reasons we've been telling you for the past few years that didn't work out anyway. Matthew 26, 36, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed, Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face, prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, watch this. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. 2020. Let this cup pass. I, Lord, please end this. Stop this virus. We were prophesying and it's going to end supernaturally and it didn't. Nobody wants to say amen, but the truth is it didn't. We, you fasted, you prayed, and it still took lives. And then we got vaccine and now a variant is starting to run through the, 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 the nation. A, a new strain. We're believing that the vaccine that was supposed to be distributed to 20 million people, it's only got to 3 million so far, will be able to provide some measure of comfort, but they said it won't be really readily available to everyone until the summer. So if you counting on the vaccine to keep you, may I encourage you, while we believe in science and we wait for the vaccine, and I believe in medicine and science, God created them and they have their proper placement, may I offer that you still need to pray and ask the Holy Ghost to put the blood on the door to cover you and your family. We are faith people. We are the people of God. I'm tired of acting like I'm something regular. I'm not, I'm not normal. I don't think normally. I don't believe normal things. I believe in the blood. I believe in communion. I believe in healing and deliverance. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the efficacy of Scripture. I believe in the local church. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I believe it. He said, not as I will, but as you will. 40th verse, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Lord, the church has been asleep. And he said to Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Peter, who got the revelation, was asleep. Jesus, in the midst of the most critical moment of his life, and Peter, the foundational revelator, the one who was able to say who Jesus was in Matthew 16, was asleep, symbolic of the church being asleep at a critical time where they needed to be wide awake. What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed saying, oh my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, Unless I drink it, your will be done. I could keep going, but I want to stop right there because for the purposes of the moments that I have with you, I need you to hear that this is the year of intention. And the first thing that we're going to need to be intentional about is what we observe in Scripture right here with our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. He was battling between his will and the will of his father. I want to talk to you in the first 
Sunday of the year from this subject, intentional conflict. Intentional conflict. You can be seated. Intentional conflict. I was conflicted because I know that normally on the first Sunday of the year, we want to have everything upbeat and come on, just encourage them with hope and fill them with, you know, excitement. And let me tell you something, hope and excitement have their place. But you know what also has its place? Truth. The reason why many of us were caught unaware is because we've been trying to appease you and not say what the Lord said. That's the difference between a worker for hire, a hireling, and a prophet. Because prophets don't say what feels good, they say what God said. Even at the expense of their life. And when you read Hebrews, the hall of faith, the ones who were really believing on this thing didn't even consider their lives worthy. They, the Bible says they, they, they were literally, they were crucified, upside down, sawn in two, drawn and quartered. The world was not worthy of them. And they did not obtain the promise because God had something better prepared for all of us that they would not be made perfect apart from us. I need you to understand that there are people who lost their lives for this gospel who did not get their prayers answered where am I getting ready to go because this idea of comfortable Christianity that's rooted in your preferences and your your it's almost like you get to order what you want like it's a restaurant Christianity is not a restaurant you don't get to order what you want God's not your waiter we serve at the request of the king the conflict is the construct that we've been in serves us. We don't serve God. No one's going to shout because you want things done your way. We serve the king. He's just not Burger King. So what we saw God do in 2020 is we saw Jesus deconstructing what man created to reestablish what God intended. Pastor Anzio, I think I'm in the book. I think I'm in the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to keep going. Jesus deconstructed what man created, all of these things. He shut them down, and we kept trying to open them back up. And God was like, I said, no. I said, that's over. This, this church age, this entertainment age, this carnival clown show with no substance sounds great, but there's no oil, there's no breakthrough. It's just a club, and it's churchy and it's catchy but as soon as it's over you're back to normal and that was never the intention of the church not when 3,000 souls would be added in a day not when you were casting out demons in the middle of the day not when you would walk up and people would dishonor God like Ananias and Sapphira and they were like I'm sorry but you're not gonna make it out of this you lied to the Holy Ghost dropped straight to the ground because there are some things you don't play with and God is one of them and this is a season where God is saying I'm not playing with y'all anymore if you thought that this was a game and a joke you need to understand you're in the middle of a cosmic conflict a conflict between the will of God and the desire of hell and the earth is in the middle and the image of God you and I are what the enemy desires because as long as we are in the earth the devil cannot have it do you understand I want to say so much. Should I say it? Yeah, I'm going to say it. Okay. So Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw him fall like lightning. Where did Satan fall? Into the earth. May I offer you that Satan fell into what is now known as the Garden of Eden. Stay with me. If God planted a garden eastward in Eden and put the man in it, can I argue that since the Bible says that your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, can I offer you a possibility that the devil didn't show up in Eden, he was there first, God put the man there from the dust of the ground raised him up, breathed into him and said, now I want you to subdue him. He's not even on my level. I just took something that he fell into, breathed into it to be on top of him. And that's why when the curses came, he said, on your belly you shall go and you shall eat the dust of the earth. 
that which is unregenerated flesh, but unregenerated flesh can be redeemed and restored when God breathes his ruach, his breath into you. And the reason why people can't stand you, the Bible says if you do this thing right, you will be hated by all men for my sake. This is why I knew that the popularity that I had and all the platforms that I had, I told my wife, I said, years ago, I said, this thing's going to shift because the more I look at scripture, the closer you get to looking like Jesus, the more people can't stand you. Oh, they're not going to like you the more you look like Jesus and the reason why is because the resurrection power of God is offensive to people why are you still preaching how come you still singing didn't you do such and such didn't you do that this that and the third and this is the power I did I was dead in my trespasses and sins but I'm glad I serve a resurrection God the king that resurrects souls and you and I are a literal construct and declaration of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ every time you open your mouth you remind the devil that I was dead in my sin but I'm now made alive in Christ Jesus now I need everybody that's in here and online to give God a 15 second resurrection praise break go Come on, you don't need a band. 15 seconds, resurrection, praise, break. Matter of fact, band, help them because they, they don't realize. Come on, 15 seconds. Thank you, Elder Brandon. I need three more people to give God a resurrection, praise, break. If God ever raised you from the dead, if he ever quickened your mortal body, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody say intentional conflict. So the conflict is, will we continue down the path that the Western church is on, which is more to appease you, or will we shift, humble ourselves, and be about the business of God's kingdom? And the answer is we need to be about the business of the kingdom. But there's a conflict between your will and the will of God. There is a tension between your will and the will of God. This is why... I agree with Pastor Jonathan Miller who says 2021 is not your year. It's God's year. I need you to get that in your spirit. This year needs to be the year where you find yourself in the will of God. They're not going to shout on this, but it's so important because we've been so self-centered and this idea of it's a quasi-hedonistic mindset. Serve me, give me what I want, make me comfortable. And this is why we don't see miracle signs and wonders because everything is catered to us as opposed to us catering to the will of God. The conflict is, will you lay down your will in exchange for his? Will you allow your character to be developed? Will you allow your flesh to be pruned to the point that you look like Jesus, to the point that you're thinking about Jesus, praying in the spirit day and night, so consumed with the gospel and the desire to be integral in your life and to live a holy life that you would rather die than sin, that you would rather think of horrible ways to end your life before you think about doing something that dishonors God. God. When will we be so consumed with the passion for our God that we wouldn't even consider anything other than living a holy life because we serve a holy God? I feel like I'm fighting alone. I need a couple intercessors. I know this is not an easy word, but if I don't tell the truth, I'm held accountable and I'm tired of other folk running around trying to make you hear what you want to hear, but you don't end up doing what you were created to do. Your life will be frustrating unless you do what God created you to do. Live holy, serve God, repent, turn from your wicked ways, change, bow down, and let the Holy Ghost get on the inside. So that you can live the life God intended for you to live. You're frustrated in your marriage. You're frustrated with your kids. You're frustrated on your job because nothing seems to fit because you're trying to fit it around what you want. But Jesus outlines for us in Gethsemane what 2021 must be. Not as I will, but as you will. It's funny because the Bible says that then Jesus prayed and went back to Peter and he was asleep. And he says, you can't even watch with me one hour. The word watch is gregoreo. It's a Greek word. It means to watch with uh, intentionality, intently, uh, observing, uh, literally concentrating, studying. You can't watch 
It's really deep. He didn't say you wouldn't pray with me. I don't even need you to pray. I just need to know that you were watching me as I pray because what I'm doing here, you're going to have to do a little later. They missed it, Elder Sharon. Jesus wasn't in the garden for himself. He was in the garden as an example that no matter who you are, how many gifts you have, how saved you are, how gifted you are, there will be a Gethsemane for you where there will be a conflict between what you want and what God wants. And if by chance Jesus Christ had a conflict with the Father, then it's okay for you to have permission to have conflicting thoughts in your mind. God, this doesn't make sense. I don't want to do this. God, this doesn't make sense. I don't want to say yes to this assignment. Jesus did not want the assignment, and he even asked the Father not to let him go through with it. But I, I, I laid down my will for yours. It was an intentional conversation, and it wasn't easy to have. But it was necessary because conflict solidifies your faith. Faith is not the absence of conflict. Faith is believing in the midst of conflict that God is who God says God is. I wish I had some help on internet land. I wish I had some help all over the chat rooms with a couple of praise hands and some hallelujahs. But conflict doesn't mean I don't have faith. Conflict shows I do have faith. My flesh is warring against my faith and that's where the conflict comes in because my flesh says protect yourself. Look out for yourself. It's all about what you can get. It's a capitalistic mindset. But the kingdom mindset says give it all away and God will bring back more. And when I get that, I'll give that away way too and it doesn't make sense to the carnal mind because the carnal mind is given to me I want to eat it all drink it all taste it all sleep with it all smoke it all shoot it all up and the and the and the spirit mindset says there's something else at play and I've tried all that and I'm still empty so maybe in 2021 I'll stop trying to do what I want and do what God wants hey there's a great idea 2021 is the end of personality-based, marketing-based popularity and ministry. In 2021, truth will be popular. Honesty will be popular. Peace will be popular. Did you hear what I said? There's a scripture, Pastor Angel, that says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, the children of God. Uh, my, 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 my godson uh, and his girlfriend came to visit uh, over the last few days, and she's a, a brilliant young lady, and she, she shared something about this idea of being a peacemaker versus being a peacekeeper. See, I have struggled because I've tried to be a peacekeeper, but a peacekeeper will do anything not to have conflict. But peacemakers, they have intentional conversations. Peacemakers deal with it. Hey, I heard you, you said something about me. Let's talk about that. No, we're not going to gossip. Oh, what'd you say about Pastor John? Let's get him on three-way. You don't like who? Don't tell me. Let's get them. Let's, let's be a peacemaker. Because one thing is the avoidance of conflict for the illusion of peace. And there's never peace when you avoid the conflict. The peace comes when you face it and say, this is the reality. And it might be there all the time, but I've made my decision. My faith is my decision. My flesh might rise up, but my faith has made the decision. I've decided to go with Jesus. I've decided to listen to the will of the Father. There are people in this room right now who made a decision to drive six hours. Others drove 16 hours and still got here. Young D'Angelo, who led us uh, uh, and was one of the leaders in worship today, he and his wife and his sons drove 16 hours on a word from God. On a word from God. Got here. He said, I, I know what God said, and I'm going to be here. And by some strange occurrence, I was able to get the message. And for the people who are in relationship with me, you know I have 1,200 text messages on my phone that aren't even open. I don't even open email sometimes, most of the time. My wife has to tell me what's going on, but I just happened to see this message because when you move on faith, God will even make ADHD people tune in because he's, if you have the guts to move, God has the power to back it. 
I need a 17 second praise break right there. Come on in this place and give God a praise. Intentional conflict says, in my natural mind, it doesn't make sense to drive somewhere where I don't know anybody and don't even know the person that I'm trying to reach. But the conflict in my body gives way to the faith in my spirit that says, God, I know you said it. So you're going to have to take care of me. In 2021, you're going to have to make faith moves, not sight moves. 2020, you see what sight will get you. 2021 needs to be the year of faith, an intentional conflict between what you see and what he said. Dad gone, Amber. I'm, I'm preaching better than they're shouting. But the problem is I'm combating a construct that was rooted in ear-tickling preaching that excites the emotions but frustrates the soul. Because no matter if I said all the nice things you want to hear, you're going to get a new car, you're going to get a new house, your marriage is going to be perfect, your kids going to get straight A's, you know, everything's going to work out, your breath will be fresh, you won't even need toothpaste. I can say all of that stuff. But the truth is, that's not what God promised. He didn't promise an absence of conflict. He promised you the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit to address the conflict and still walk in the fullness of God. I wish I had some help on the left-hand side. God did not promise an absence of conflict. He gave you his Holy Spirit so you can address it. And when there's a devil present, you make that devil bow down or cast it out because you've got the power of the Most High God on the inside. Intentional conflict means you need to address and face the areas that have been hindering you and, and holding you hostage. Face them. Everybody say face it. No, that was a tender, quiet, in the mask kind of thing. No, I need you to say face it. Write it in the chat feed right now. I'm already sick of it, people. Put it in capital letters with a whole lot of exclamation marks behind it. Face it. Jesus had to face the dual nature, his humanity, his divinity, personal preference versus the will of the one who called him. And this has been the problem with the church. We've had too many self-serving, self-seeking leaders who build empires to themselves and an ecosystem that they are the head of as opposed to servant-based leaders that are fighting to deploy other people into end-time warfare where all of us are pointing to Jesus because all of us are flawed and scarred and so all of us need the same Jesus as opposed to Jesus juniors running around with special robes and special details who can't speak to regular people as if you're not a regular person. You use the bathroom just like me. You fart just like me. You make mistakes just like me. There is no big I and little you. And God is deconstructing the mindset of the church where the pastor walks in like he's God. You better humble yourself, ma'am. Humble yourself, sir. The conflict between you wanting to be worshipped and God being the one who is to be worshipped is the very thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. So be careful. You don't get a kingdom to yourself. Ah! intentional conflict God created us to have dominion over the devil have dominion over every creeping thing that creeps upon the face of the earth something within the eternal nature of our being whispers that there's more to life than just what I want my carnal Pleasure. This is the year of God's will. And I'm going to tell you this. Your life will not make sense without you being in God's will. 2021 will be so frustrating for you if you don't find yourself doing what God has intended for you to do. Intentional conflict means you and I are going to have to address the disparate images, the imagery of a Western Christian construct that is self-serving, self-seeking, comfort-based versus the will of the Father that says, address your flesh issues, face it head on, all that stuff that's been going on in your family. Stop being a peacekeeper and become a peacemaker. 
that means you have to put your hands on stuff. And you're going to have to address those things. Address your flesh. Address the issues that have been dangling in the wind. Jesus was in that garden. And he said, I don't want to do this. But this is what I was created for. There was a conflict. And there's nothing wrong with conflict. As long as at the end of the conflict, you find yourself saying, not as I will, but as you will. In 2021, my prayer for you is that you and I will find ourselves squarely in the midst of God's will. Not doing anything that would offend the divine nature and calling that is on the inside of us. I told you this is not a teaching, this is a word. 2021 is not your year, it's God's year. It's the year of his will. It's the year of his will over the will of the flesh, over the will of man, over the will of conventional wisdom. It is the year where you have the necessary uncomfortable conversations with inside of you, the areas that you feel are sacred, the things that you've held on to that don't line up with his will. Have the conversation and then make the decision to do what God says versus what you want. Oh, and by the way, when you have a moment of intentional conversation and intentional conflict to deal with the, the battle between your flesh and your spirit while you're having that conversation, while you're in Gethsemane and it looks like all your enemies are surrounding you, God is also surrounding your enemies while they're surrounding you. So I don't need you to worry about the people that don't like you. Because here's what's deep. Jesus had followers and he had watchers. The Pharisees were watchers. The Sadducees were watchers. They couldn't stand him anyway, but then when he got Lazarus up from the grave, they really hated him. And isn't this deep, Amber? Pastor Amber, the Bible said they tried to kill Lazarus. They wanted to kill Lazarus because him being resurrected was evidence that their entire religious construct was wrong. Because the Pharisees believed that the, the spirit hovered around the body for three days. But after the third day, it was gone. You could never return. And then the Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection at all. And so Jesus messed with the religious folk, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They hated each other, but they hated Jesus more. So they hated him so much that they came together. You so anointed, you got your enemies talking to one another. Even in that, you're a peacemaker. I know I just through a little curveball right there. I need you to be so much filled with God that they, like they literally hate you because you represent resurrection. All right, it's time to go. It's time to go. Um, we're going to stay in this intentional series for as long as the Lord tells me. Intentional conflict means we're going to start with the battle between the flesh and the spirit. And how do you make your flesh bow down? You starve it. Starting on January 11th, we're going to go 21 days. 21 days, and you're going to have a full 21-day devotional instructions. We're going to be in prayer every day together. You'll be able to pray with me, pray with the leaders. We're going to be there together. It's going to be an amazing time in God's presence, and there's going to be strategy connected to our fasting. You're not just going to be starving, okay? Because you just not eating ain't enough. You need to fast and pray. I don't want to just fast at the top of the year like we always do. And then we fasted last year. The virus still came. I want to fast and tell viruses you can't come to this country. I want to fast and things change in my neighborhood, in my city. I want to fast and things break out all over the nation. I want revival. I don't want games. But it comes with intentional conflict, a prayer life that's rooted in the reality that I have a will that needs to be subservient to the will of God. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for your people and I thank you for your presence. And I pray that at the beginning of this year, we make a decision to be intentional, to have uncomfortable conversations with the people, with the family members, with the spouse, coworkers, Instead of taking all this stress in our body and giving ourselves ulcers, let's face it head on. And then, God, for those areas of conflict that we have with you, where the will of our 
own mind conflicts with the will of heaven. May we have the conversation and still find ourselves saying yes to you. Not as I will, but as you will. Conflict is not a bad thing when we address it in the right way and submit it to you. Now seal this word as the beginning of the year. Set the edges for the year in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I would tell you that your soul is conflicted. Now, your flesh will tell you you're fine, but something in your spirit is whispering that you're, it's empty. There's, I need something more. The something more is the reconnection with the one that created you. His name is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Through him, all things were made that were made, and not one thing that was made was made without him. And in him was life that life was the light of men and we beheld that light it's the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth his name is Jesus and if you need him I want everyone here and everyone online to pray this prayer with me Lord Jesus it's me I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord thank you for the blood that was shed for me I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. If you're a part of our family after that prayer, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you're saved. We want to welcome you to the family of faith. You want to be a part of Relentless Church? I'm telling you, I don't think there's a greater church with what God is doing here and what is about to take place. You want to be a part of this move. I know it, it takes time to get to know people, to trust them. I need you to stay right here and walk with us. See if the Spirit of God is not here. But if you're making that decision, text the number on the screen. Text the number on the screen so that we can follow up with you this week. I want to tell you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. I want to tell you that you mean the world to us. This is relentless. We crazy. We love God, but we, we, we have fun. We serve God and we bless other people. And that's the life of intentionality that we're inviting you to walk with us in. Have you been blessed today? Thank you guys for being a part of what God is doing. For those who are in here, all 17 of us, come on and stand up. For those who are a part of our Relentless Online family, I love you so much. We're so grateful for you. Some of you are saying, I didn't get a chance to give during the giving moment. Uh, Elder Brandon and uh, Jasmine are coming back in just a few minutes and they'll let you know if you want to give, you can go online or any of that stuff. But I want to tell you how much it means that you joined us for the first Sunday of the year. Intentional conflict. Have the necessary conversations and set the edges to lay down your will in exchange for the will of the Father. And then it will go well with you and your house. Not just for 2021, but for every year that will follow it. May the Lord bless you and keep you cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord our God be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful first week of the year.